Our first date was actually at an Edwards Theater in Napa. We went to watch the movie called The Martian. Uh, she came over from Fruitland, we met up, it was really late. And I hadn't realized that the movie was three hours long, but uh, she was really tired after, so we chatted just a little bit after the movie was done and then she went on her way. We met at um, Edwards Theater, and I remember that I was house sitting for my friend in Fruitland and had just gotten like done like one of my first year days of teaching. I went all the way out to Fruitland and then I milked goats, and he was really insistent that meet up to go to the you know really, really be okay if you know, we picked a different thing. He was really insistent, so I was like, you know what, okay, fine, I'll go to this date. And we went to the movie, so it's like, how much can you really know somebody like going to the movies? I was like, okay, that's fine. When I decided to ask her to be my girlfriend, and she was a little hesitant at first, it was right around Thanksgiving time, but we decided to move forward with it, um, and then... It was probably, I would say, about a year later. Um, just from knowing her, we moved in together, and everything that we could confide in each other for, I think, kind of showed us that. Uh, showed me anyway that I loved her. So for me, I don't think it was like something that was just like all of a sudden. I think it was like a gradual thing that like it just increased. If that makes sense. So like, yeah, I just started like about him more and I was like no it's kind of fun to hang out and you know it's just it was grand for me for sure. What I'm excited for is moving forward um having kids uh seeing where the future takes us as far as our goals for the future. I think like all the new stuff uh just doing stuff like together want to like build a house and buy some land our family, so all the new stuff that we get to do together and as a team. So I'm really excited about the, the teamwork we get to do together. We've almost been together for five years. So it's been a long time coming. <laughs> I'm happy. That, that makes sense. I want to offer you a gift, so to speak, a thought, and it might seem really odd at first, but bear with me. What I offer you is not a very worldly thing, 
Behind me on the wall is, is a crucifix, a cross with Jesus nailed to it, the dying Jesus. No greater love has one than to lay down his life for a friend. And we always keep before us the kind of love God has for us in front of our eyes. That's the real deal. When you're willing to lay it all down for the other, when you're willing to lay it all down, to put all the chips forward, it says a lot of me. Love by definition, Christian love is to desire the greatest good for the other. That is that the other becomes more important than the self. That is why God is love. God is love. That's who God is. The Bible tells us that because God cares more about us than himself, which is why he's willing to die for us on the cross. But Dustin, from this day forward, Michelle's life is more important than yours. Her hopes, her dreams, her plans, you take second place. Now you might think, well, that's, that's fine and good of all, but what about me? That's the beauty of marriage, Michelle. His life is more important than yours. His hopes, his dreams, his needs, you take second place. What a beautiful arrangement for you have someone who's making a promise to always make sure that you're taken care of. To have someone who's going to make a solemn promise that I want to make sure that the greatest good is done in your life even if it costs me. But when man and wife live that way, then you should both be well taken care of, shouldn't you? Right, husbands and wives? Works great, doesn't it? It does work great when we love. When we let love really be the driving force of our life. I could have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries of knowledge, I could be the smartest person on the planet and really know all these things, but if I don't have love, I'm nothing. It says love is patient. Love is kind. It's not rude. And it doesn't seek its own interest. It's not quick temper, right? Love is about the other. It doesn't brood over injury. It's not like, ha ha, you got what you deserved. It's not, it's not what that is. Our world will get to see again what love looks like. I think if there's one thing our world needs to be reminded of is that love still exists. And it's still powerful. And it's still alive. And so I'm so proud of you. And now it comes. We have come to the time where you two get to make a solemn promise of love to each other. You have come together into the house of the church, lit in the presence of the church's minister in this community. Your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord, the sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you and through a special sacrament, matrimony. He enriches and strengthens you you may assume all of the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Three questions. Dustin, Michelle, have you come here freely to enter into marriage wholeheartedly and without coercion? Yes. yes. Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live. Yes. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God, if it be his will, and to bring them up according to the law of Christ, his church? Yes. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of marriage, I invite you to face each other, to join your hands, and declare your consent before God,
I dust it and take it to the shelf to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. Be good times. God joins together that no one may put asunder. Amen. And now will the ring bearer please come forward. sign on the altar in your marriage documents. God, who by your mighty power created love and filled the world with love. O God, by whom man and woman is joined and the companionship they had at the beginning is endowed with one blessing, look now in favor, with favor on these your servants joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down upon them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts that they may remain faithful to the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Michelle. Let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. And may her husband entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and joint heir to the life of grace he may show her to honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And may the grace of love and peace abide in your son, Dustin. Let him always follow the example of those holy men whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May his wife entrust her heart to him. 
acknowledging him as her equal, joint heir to the life of grace, she may show him due honor and cherish him always with the love Christ has for his church. We implore you, Lord, that may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all that they do. With the strength that comes from the gospel, they may bear true witness for all your love. And grant them reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope. They may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us now pray, all of us together, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another. And may the peace of Christ dwell always in your home. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. And may you be witnesses in the world of God's love, so that the afflicted and the needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's now my honor for the very first time to present to all of you, as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Young. Congratulations. I wasn't sure if this day was ever going to come. 
because of COVID, not because I didn't think anybody could love Michelle. <laughs> I just wanted to start off by saying thank you to everybody that came out to support um, Michelle and Dustin. I know they both really appreciate it. Um, I know all, they really love all the love and support they've got, especially these past few crazy months. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, I am Michelle's favorite sister. Also her only, but we don't mention that. Ever since we were young, Michelle has always been a very driven person. She would throw herself all into whatever it was that she was doing, whether it be a project or FFA. And I see that same drive in her today, from teaching and Mary Kay to all of her other projects. It seems like she is always busy, and I never really thought she would have time for a boyfriend. But here we are, so I guess she figured out how to squeeze some time in. All jokes aside, I'm really glad that she found a guy that loves her enough to not only love her, but all of her ideas. <laughs> when I was looking up what to write in a maid of honor speech, it said to talk about a funny story or about the first time you met the groom. And quite honestly, I don't remember meeting Dustin, and I don't have anything embarrassing or any funny stories to tell you. So I guess you're off the hook, Dustin. <laughs> But what I do remember about Dustin is the cheesy jokes that he makes that make you kind of want to cringe, kind of like Michelle's. <laughs> but I also remember the genuine smiles on your faces in the pictures that you have together. And most importantly, I remember getting the call from Michelle after he proposed and how happy her voice sounded. I hope you both feel the happiness that you had on that day and today for the rest of your lives. I love you both and wish you all the happiness in the world. Cheers. Hi, my name's Matt. I've been Dustin's friend for quite a while. I think we were about seven when I met him. And I'm sorry I didn't write anything. <laughs> so I, I'm really bad at public speaking, but we've been through a lot of stuff together, really fun times. He's a great guy. And I'm happy for you, you and Michelle. And I know you're going to have a great rest of your life. I love you guys. Hi, I'm Tasha, Dustin's mom. First of all, I want to thank everyone for being here and sharing this happy time together. And thank you, Rita and Bernie, for all you've done to make this occasion extra special and for raising such an amazing, strong, caring, smart, accomplished, independent, driven, and beautiful young lady. We love you, Michelle, and we look forward to more game nights, barbecues, birthday parties, and all the life events our families will share in the future. My relationship with Dustin is unique and very special. You see, I met Dustin and his twin brother, Duke, three months before their second birthday. Their dad and I had been dating a couple of weeks, and then I met them. It was true love at first sight, first with their father, and then with these two handsome, big brown eyed boys with golden brown curls. They were adorable. They may not have grown under my heart, but they have grown deeply in my heart. Dustin was a very active, athletic, smart, strong, honest, and happy boy. He loved to play. He liked to play basketball, baseball, football, boxing, and riding his bike. And he was a quick thinker. Once after playing a game of baseball, he was heading back to school when his friend Moses um, hollered at him and told him that a ball was coming his way, and boom, the baseball smacked him in his mouth, and his tooth was hanging from its root, and Dustin immediately uh, shoved his tooth back into its socket, and he was only 11 years old, and the strength that he had to do that and not cry saved his tooth. Dustin is real, and he feels no need or desire to be anything he's not. If you want an honest answer, ask Dustin. If you need anything, Dustin's there. An interesting fact about Dustin is he has an ear for music. He can play the guitar, piano, saxophone, and violin. I am so proud of the man he is today. The first time I met Michelle was on Thanksgiving Day five years ago. I remember seeing that look in his eyes and was pretty sure and hopeful she was the one. Their babies are going to be gorgeous. Through the years, we have gotten to know Michelle and she, has a, she was already family before today. When my mom passed away in August, Michelle was a source of strength and helpfulness and the love she showed will never be forgotten. I have no doubt her and Dustin have what it takes to thrive in the good times and faith and grit to get through the bad times. 
Michelle and Dustin, may God bless you both and always remember to take time for one another, always respect and be kind to one another, and to never give up on one another. And here's to a lifetime of love and countless happy memory-making moments. Cheers. Daisies blooming Sundress swaying in the breeze I can't stop staring You've put a spell on me And I hope that you never decide to set me free The way you're moving It's got me moving my own feet feeling that I could ever dare to dream is you forever moving next to me let's not waste time or take this slow we've got miles behind us but miles to go so let's just break this down to the simplest truth Better than